Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to another building on WordPress tutorial. In today's video, we are going to take a look at how to customize the WooCommerce account area and do so super simply. And this is going to actually kind of be uh, like a two for one tutorial because we'll take a look at some of the styling things that I do a lot for my clients. So what we're looking at here, this kind of actually just started out yesterday as an idea that I had to sort of build out a place for you guys to get these resources in the future. And while I don't know for sure if this is something that I'm actually going to do, it was a lot of fun to build out. But one of the things that I wanted to include was a my account area. Now, there isn't going to be anything paid for this right out the gate, but I thought it might be nice to have an, a decent looking uh, my account page. But we all know what the standard my account page looks like. So if I were to jump in here, go to the back end and click on pages, we'll see that we have some of the standard WooCommerce uh, default pages. And here's my account. If I take a look at that, it looks a little bit like this. Again, not bad, but this is kind of what you expect. This is the out of the box styling. And I wouldn't be lying if I told you that it is really, really easy to style this to your liking. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we are on the My Account page. We're gonna go ahead and as you all know, I'm a huge fan of the Cornerstone Builder from ThemeCo. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to click on Edit Page. That'll take me to the back end of the page here and I'm going to click on Edit with Cornerstone. Once I've done that and the page has loaded up, I want this to be a full width page like a lot of my other pages here. So I'm going to click on settings here and under page template, I'm going to click on no container header footer. So we'll go ahead and click on that guy. Now we've got a full width page. The next thing we're gonna do is because we've converted this to a cornerstone page, it overrode the uh, my account short code. So there is nothing on this page now. If I were to go ahead and save and then jump you out to the front end of the site, you'll notice there is nothing now on this my account page. So the next thing we're gonna do is open up this guy here and uh, let's put a raw element out here and then inside that raw element and right over here in the my content area we are just going to type woocommerce underscore my underscore account and end the brackets there so you can kind of see what that looks like that's just the woocommerce my account short code and you'll see that standard layout pulled back in here so let's jump over refresh our page and there it is i can click on these i can click on orders downloads dashboard and it's all there but now we're going to do two things here um, the first thing is i am actually going to duplicate this this top one, and these are just some opinionated styles that I like doing, but this top one, um, I'm actually going to make the row that we're on here. So let's go ahead and jump over to the row. Let's go ahead and give that a max width of like, I don't know, uh, let's do 600, something like that. Yeah, I like that. All right. And then within that row, we have a column. We'll go ahead and set this again. These are just opinionated styles. Kind of matches the site though. We'll add a little bit of box shadow. And you'll see why I'm doing this in just a moment. Uh, let's add a little bit of padding in here just because I think that makes it look a little cleaner, a little more professional. So there we go, we got this little thing set up here. Now, what we're gonna do is on this entire section, and this is what's really great about Cornerstone is we can come in and on sections, on rows, on elements, on columns, on all types of uh, containers and elements, we can add these conditions. And so we're gonna go ahead and add a condition that basically just says user is logged in. Uh, and we wanna set that to user is not logged in. So this first section here is only gonna show up when a user is not logged in to their account, okay? The second one here, we'll go ahead and click customize and under conditions, we'll do user logged in and we'll leave it as the default option, which is the user is logged in. So this top one will show when a user is not logged in and this bottom one will show when a user is logged in. So let's jump over to the front end and take a look. Now, because I am currently logged into the site, I am only gonna see that second option here. So you might be wondering to yourself, 
Josh, why the heck did you create that first one? Well, I really want there to be a nice login form. So now if I were to log out, this is what that page looks like. Now, there's probably some styling I'd want to mess around with here to sort of close this margin up at the top and separate out our remember me. And I'll put some of these styles in the comment section of the video that would clean up stuff like this. But now we have this login form. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and log in and then you'll see what it does here. So now I have my info in here and when I log in, I'm now in a logged in state and it shows me the second option. Uh, now, all of that technically happens right out of the box without you having to duplicate sections. But the reason we're doing that is because we're gonna actually edit this form here quite a bit differently. So the next thing that we're gonna do so that we can kind of customize this page once a user is logged in is we wanna remove this so that we can kind of add in our own. And I will show you on the back end where we can go to find out what these endpoints are in the URL after the fact. But we're gonna go ahead and sort of click in this empty space here. And right now we've selected some of the buttons. So we wanna move up just a notch here to the parent container, which is WooCommerce, my account, navigation. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and click on that. We'll copy the class. We're gonna jump back over to our back end here. And just for the sake of labeling things, let's call this first section login form, because this is where the only time somebody sees this is when they're logging in. And then the second section, we'll call this uh, account view and this is where they can actually view their account details so now let's go ahead and add a little bit of styling uh, the first thing that we are going to do uh, is on this page we'll go ahead and under page css under our custom code here we're going to go ahead and paste that class that we just grabbed and we want to add a period to the beginning so that it uh, is an active class that we can uh, add some css styles to and we're going to type in display none and now you'll notice it got rid of that navigation up top, which is kind of bundled in. We do wanna keep the container just cause it's nice. That's what pulls through all of the data dynamically. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab our row container. We're gonna add another column. And I actually want that column to be first. And then we're gonna do these side by side. And again, you guys could do whatever you wanted to do here, but just kind of follow along um, and adapt as you see fit. Um, I'm gonna add some of our same padding and styles here. So. We'll go like three M's, border radius of one M. Maybe we want this to look like it's lifted off a little bit since it's gonna have our navigation in it. And we'll give it, you know, some sort of box shadow or something like this. Um, you know, there we go. And then I want this container to still feel like it's part of uh, that same screen. So we might give this column uh, some padding as well and make this white and give it the same border radius just so some things match there. So now, as a logged in user, let's go ahead and close this. This is the default styling here. And with just some basic CSS to hide this navigation container, we're able to get something that looks a little more like this here, which is looking nice. Um, and again, you guys can adapt. So the next thing we're gonna do is create our navigation. So if we jump over to the back end of the website and we go to WooCommerce and we jump down to settings and jump over to advanced, you'll notice that right down here we have our account endpoints. And this is basically what comes after the my-account URL uh, in the URL bar. So this would be uh, your domain name forward slash my-account forward slash orders would take you here. So here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna actually open up another tab here. We'll go to appearance and we're gonna create our menu. So I'm gonna open up this tab and we'll start creating. Um, I like giving my menus just sort of like a clean organized uh, name. So this is my global nav one and we'll click create menu. From here, I can do one of two things. I could open up my custom links and start adding in those endpoints manually, especially if I wanted to add some other items into my account area, or I can see if everything's accessible under our WooCommerce endpoints tab here. So we'll add in orders, downloads, addresses, account details, uh, maybe we even want our log out, uh, lost password probably doesn't make sense here because we're logged in. So we'll go ahead and keep those as they are. And something I like doing is adding in some icons here. So this is order. So maybe we want uh, O dash shop. Um, and maybe there's a shopping bag. Yeah, something like this. Um, and probably want to spend some more time on this, making sure they're right. But downloads, maybe there's a uh, O dash download. Um, There we go. I haven't even checked these, so I don't know what all they're gonna look like. Uh, O-account, 
Um, nope, doesn't look like there is. I don't know. Let's do let's do an Xbox. I don't know why we'd do that, but it'll work. Um, and then we'll go ahead and well, let's do this. Account details. Maybe this is uh, O dash credit card blank. And then log out might just be, I don't know if there's like arrow circle left. I don't know what that's gonna look like, but let's go ahead and add that in there. So we've got our endpoints here and you could add in other things here too, based on whatever kind of site you're building. Maybe you have a how-to guide or you have a support page or whatever, and we will go ahead and save. Once we've done that, let's jump back into Cornerstone here and let's grab our navigation element. And you could pick a couple of different versions of this, but we're just gonna do navigation in line. We'll grab that inline element. We'll turn on flex direction column, and we're going to do on our top links here, we're going to do uh, horizontal, and we don't want this to be center, we want this to be start. So now we have something like this, but it's still full width. And then again, maybe just for the sake of design, on our top links there, the background has some sort of like faded color on it when you hover. So there we go. Now. Uh, let's pull through our proper menu. We're going to do that right here under uh, the menu tab and then which menu we're assigning. Currently, we're on sample. Here is our global nav one. Click on that. And now we have our orders and all of that fun stuff. The next thing we're going to do is under top links here to see those graphics that we were assigning. We're going to go ahead and check the box for graphics. And now you'll notice all of those graphics are coming through. Uh, let's see what those look like a little bit smaller here make them 1M, there we go. And maybe we want those to have some sort of little background to them as well. So we might do something like this and like like that. So uh, now let's maybe close up some of the gaps a little bit here. Um, so we might go to something like this. Yeah, there we go. That's looking a little better. And then just so that those um, there's some spacing between our hover boxes here, um, maybe we just add 0 0.15 M top and bottom. So just a little bit of spacing, but now it's between the actual top link containers. So with all of those things done, the opinionated styles, the little bit of CSS to hide our navigation here, and the connecting of the dots from our WooCommerce endpoints, we now end up with something like this, which is pretty cool. And I can now click on downloads, and it'll show me whatever downloads I have available. I can click on addresses, and it'll show me whatever addresses I have in there. I can click on account details, and it'll show me my account details and what I have set up. And I can also save those changes here. And then I can click log out, It'll log me out and I see the log in form. So now with nothing but some very simple design choices, we've been able to elevate the look and the feel of our account area. Now, there are things that we can do that I've used with clients before to take this a step further. Let's say you wanted this to look a little bit more like a platform when they log in. Well, we could do something like building out an actual dashboard portal. Um, again, it's really nothing different than what we just did, but we're playing with some additional styles. So let me go ahead and log back in here. And in a nutshell, this is what we might do if we wanted to make this feel a little bit more like a platform. We might take something like this here and delete our first column there. Let's go ahead and make this full width. And now what we're gonna do is come over here. We're gonna create a new header and this is gonna be specifically for logged in users. So let's go ahead and do that with the header here. We'll click create. And I wanna be previewing the My Account page because that's what we're building this for. So under preview, We'll go to page and under page, we will click my account. So now we're previewing the my account page as it currently stands. Let's go ahead and actually on this one here, we'll go ahead and save with our updates so that when we jump back over here, we see those. All right, so we got rid of the sidebar that we had there with the menu. So now what we're gonna do is within our header, we are gonna jump over to settings and we're gonna check the box for multi-region. So instead of a top header, which is what we're all used to on a website, um, on a lot of platforms you see sidebars, right? Because they, you know, they're, it's a tool, it's allowing you to do things, it adds some unique functionality. And so if you're trying to achieve that look, we'll go ahead and call this um, the portal. And let's say we're creating it from scratch. 
Now we're gonna create, and you'll notice that multi-region just enabled this for us here. So we're gonna create a left sidebar and we're gonna go ahead and add that bar in. And there, there we have it. Um, and we're gonna delete that top bar. So I just want this bar here. Now we're gonna do a couple of things. First, we're gonna go ahead and add uh, a couple of divs here. And this just allows us to space things out kind of nicely. Um, we already have Flexbox enabled on this container. So we are going to do our vertical, and it is already set up perfectly, space between. We'll take our div, make sure it stretches full width. And we are going to use two of these. Uh, let's add a little bit of padding, just so things don't stretch fully to the edges here, right? Again, just some breathing room is always nice. Uh, let's try two M's, that might be a little much. Mm, that, that looks good. We'll go ahead and add our logo in here like you might see on a site like this. And there we go. So there's our logo and we might want that to be centered. So we'll come over here under Flexbox, horizontal center. So we got our logo centered there. I think that's looking pretty good. Now, same thing like we did before. We're gonna go ahead and grab our navigation in line uh, and we'll add it underneath our logo. Let's go ahead and add some margin under our logo here. So there's again, a little bit of breathing room. And then on our top links, we're again gonna grab our horizontal positioning and set that to start. So now let's go ahead and style these links. Uh, just like we did before, we're gonna click on our top links here. We're gonna enable the graphics so that we're pulling that through. On our navigation, let's go ahead and set this to our proper global nav one here. And then maybe just give it some of that background styling that we did before, something like that on hover uh, and then 0 0.25 and our margin might be 0 0.15. It's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and set an active state on these. Something I like doing is under our primary here, we might set this to bottom, whoops, bottom left and X position and our origin is gonna be bottom left as well. And then we'll add some color. And so that underlines things. And you know what, for something like this, I actually want this to be Y and we're gonna do full left and origin top. And our height is gonna be 100% and our width is gonna be three pixels. So we're kind of reversing those. Now, there we go, we got a little sidebar that shows up there. Uh, the other thing we're gonna do is add, just because we added that sidebar in there, we're gonna add a little more left margin here. Let's add 0.5, so it just spaces out that graphic a little bit from the left bar. And then the final thing we're gonna do is just make sure that we have primary particle turned on. And if you were doing some graphic styles, we'd want that those on as well. And there we have it, I think that looks pretty good. The other thing that we're gonna do, maybe we want to have some sort of, uh, Let's do a drop down, put that here. And within this, uh, we are going to set our font size to 1M, come over to the toggle, add some text. Um, within, let's turn the box shadow off. Oh, and you know what? Because this is a fresh toggle, uh, we're gonna set our width and our height to auto. We're gonna come into our text field here and we're gonna pull through our display name, so now it should say my name in there. Yep, there it is. And then under this, we might add some interaction color to the name, so it should be purple now, there we go. And instead of a burger, I actually want this to be a user account icon, something like this. Um, now, the other thing we wanna do, because I want this to be easily clickable, so I'm gonna come over to that width and now make it 100%, and I'm gonna set our horizontal to start. So now what we've got, and you know what, let's go ahead and set our conditions on this so we can see it on the front end. So we're gonna come back to the main header that we're working on, this portal header, and under uh, the outline tab under settings, we're gonna add our conditions. So I'm gonna set page specific to is my account, and we may need to adjust this a little bit to make sure that it applies to all of our other endpoints as well. And then if you do have another header, which we do in this case, we have our top header, uh, we wanna set this to a, a lower priority so that it overrides that if we're logged in. So we're gonna go ahead and just in this case, make this whoa, negative one and save.
Now, when we jump back over to our account area and let's go ahead and open this up, we should see, there we go, our setup here. So now we could go downloads and it changes that, addresses and it changes that, account details and it pulls this up, et cetera, et cetera. Now, it might be a little bit weird with this footer here because we don't have a lot of details. So one of the things I typically do when I'm building out a portal like this is I will actually jump into, let's go back to our My Account page here. And in that My Account page, we will add two things. One, we want this to look like it takes up the full height. So we're gonna do a bottom margin of 100 VH, viewport height. So our login form is still at the top here, but then you got some scroll below it. And you could play around with these styles as well, but we'll do that on this bottom one here too and we need to make sure we hit enter. Okay, so now we have that done. The other thing is once somebody's logged in, I don't know how beneficial a footer menu is. And so typically in a portal like this, I would either have a specific footer to the portal. So it might have some info in here about how to contact support and all of that fun stuff, or we could do away with it altogether. So on our outline here under settings, under our no container header footer, we would do no container header, no footer and we'll go ahead and save that. Now, when we come over to a page like this and we refresh, we have a nice little portal that looks like this. We can click on orders and you'll notice order stays styled as active as we have it. We can click on downloads and those all show up here as they should. We have our little account information here, which doesn't look like it does much yet, but let's go ahead and make that do something. You could go ahead and style this with whatever information you wanted to include in there. But what I typically like to do is put some uh, welcome information. So we might have something like this. And in our drop down, let's go ahead and just add again. Notice I'm a fan of padding here. Add some padding. This might say, hello. a little wave in there, something like that. Then we might have a little bit of supporting text here. Uh, and let's go ahead and make this just a little bit bigger. There we go. And then maybe we have some actions that they can take. So, uh, you know, we might have a uh, contact support button. And then we might also have a log out button. And this might be where those both live. And the way we'd get that log out URL is by using our dynamic content here. We'd pull up our dynamic content selector. We would type log out, select that. And now we're pretty much in business here. You know, log out, we might wanna make it very clear that they're about to log out. So it might look something like this. And I can't stand the drop shadows on these, so let's go ahead and turn that off and just give it some sort of border. Now, let's jump back to our front end here, refresh the page. We can come down to our account information, click on this, we get our welcome message, hello Josh, input your text here, yada, 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 contact support and log out. And again, just like we've been doing, if I were to click this log out button, it now logs us out of the site. So hopefully we've killed two birds with one stone here. You've learned how to customize the off the shelf WooCommerce styles to sort of meet the needs of your website. And then you've also seen how I like to style things and how I might go about creating like a portal or a dashboard for a client with some of these opinionated styles as well. As always, I hope you guys find these videos useful. If you guys have other methods for tackling the WooCommerce account area, I'd love to hear them. Leave those in the comments below. Don't forget to give a thumbs up to this video and subscribe to the channel, Building on WordPress. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.